In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to host a secure Zoom meeting. A Zoom meeting that is safe, where there's no Zoom bombing, as they call it, where no unauthorized users can jump onto your meeting and interrupt things. This is especially important when you're dealing with confidential information in a business meeting or a government meeting. This is especially important when you're dealing with children who are using Zoom uh, with their schooling and somebody could jump on and share inappropriate images. Uh, there's been various reported cases, especially recently with a ton of more people using Zoom, um, of, of unauthorized people jumping onto Zoom meetings, Zoom meetings and interrupting it. And people are thinking that it's a hack, that it's an issue with the Zoom security, um, but it's not. Almost every single case has to do with, well, every single reported case I know of has to do with people not enabling the right settings in their meeting and the hack easily could have been prevented if they had these settings in the correct place. So I'm gonna show you exactly what settings to have on and off so that you can host a completely secure Zoom meeting and not have to risk uh, people joining who are una una unauthorized to be in that meeting. So we're in the Zoom account right now and we're in the just the meetings uh, settings section. So first of all, at the top, host video participants video. Just go ahead and have the, partici the, the participants video off and that will allow um, that, that, that way, just by default, you have more control of the meeting. When people jump on, their video isn't on by default and you can, you can, um, just have more control that way. Uh, join before host, allow participants to join the meeting before the host arrives. Have that turned off. That again, just gives you more control as the host where people can't even be on there until you're on there and you can now manage people and kick people off that aren't authorized if that happens to be the case. Now, the uh, the 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 first thing that you need to make sure uh, you understand with preventing unauthorized people from joining the meeting is to always generate a unique meeting ID for every meeting. Don't use your personal meeting ID. Don't use that uh, ever. I mean, there's really no unless you're you're like I only use mine when I'm getting on Zoom calls with my with my close family. Um, and they're the only ones that know that, but with business, with anything else, I, I never share that because once you share it with somebody and it starts to leak around to different people and you're on a meeting with somebody, now anybody can just join in your room and interrupt things. So always generate an, a unique meeting ID. And, uh, and so have this off by default, use personal meeting ID when scheduling a meeting, just have that off by default. Only authenticated users can join meetings. I don't always use this feature, but it's a feature that just adds an extra level of security um, that if everyone that's gonna join your meeting, if they all have Zoom accounts, then they have to log in to their Zoom account, they have to be authenticated, their, their identity has to be authenticated for them to be able to join the meeting and they have to receive a very specific invite to join the meeting. And certainly I would recommend this for anyone that has is dealing with very confidential uh, information in a meeting, your government or a business who need that extra level of security. There's an, that's an option there. Require a password when scheduling new meetings. Always have that on um, because then even, even if somebody happens to share the Zoom meeting link or it gets out or somebody happens to uh, uh, look at somebody's social media account and, and the Zoom link was posted there, um, almost every instance where somebody hacked quote unquote a meeting um, they didn't have a password set for the meeting so this way uh, you give people the password directly who are invited to the meeting and they have to enter in that password in order to join the meeting uh, same thing for instant meetings um, now this is one way where you can embed the password in a meeting link where somebody can just click the link in their email and it automatically um, enters in a password and enters them into the meeting but they have to have the email to get in and that's another option. Requiring a password for, for participants joining by phone is a great way um, to also add that extra level of security for those that are on the phone. Mute participants upon entry just gives you, again, more control over the meeting. Uh, requiring encryption for third-party endpoints is just another level of security that if you're using a Zoom client or Zoom room, which is a specific um, version of Zoom, then you can, you can encrypt it even more. And uh, these are just some other user controls that I'm not going to get into right now. So having a co-host, allow the host to add co-hosts. Have this on because 
in the, the thing I'm going to get to in a second with screen sharing is extremely important. So you want to be able to add co-host for this very reason. So screen sharing, the, the reason why there's been recent reported cases of people jumping onto Zoom meetings and sharing inappropriate images is because they were able to share their screen. So you have to go in here and you have to make sure that who can share is set to host only, not all participants. And if you have multiple people presenting as part of your Zoom meeting, that is why you allow the host to add co-hosts. Because if you have co-hosts, you can allow them to share their screen. But then nobody else can share their screen. So even if somebody happens to jump onto the Zoom meeting and they get a hold of the link and the password somehow, they won't be able to share their screen. So the worst they can do is, is, is turn on their audio or video and, and uh, interrupt that way. But as the host, you can still immediately turn off their video and audio. And you can actually go in through the Zoom uh, meeting itself on the Zoom window. You can go to the far right and click on more and you can mute all participants and you can prevent them from unmuting themselves so that now no unauthorized person can turn on their audio and start interrupting that way. Um, and if they turn on their video, you can immediately turn it off. You can kick them out of the meeting immediately. If you want to be able to prevent all the attendees of the meeting from even having the option of turning on their video and audio, you do the webinar version. You sign up for the Zoom webinar version, which means that by default, all the attendees, they don't even have access to turning on their video and audio unless you as the host invite them to. And so I would recommend for any teachers who are using Zoom for, to, for schooling, that you absolutely use the webinar version so that you're, you're where, where the children, they can still interact with you. And even a business, whatever government, use the webinar version. You can, you can allow the attendees, you can invite them to become participants in, in, in the webinar and turn on their video and audio and interact with you and ask a question if they need to. But by default, they don't have the option of turning on their audio and video, which absolutely gives more security there if you're using the webinar version. Now, another thing you can do is that once all um, the uh, participants that you're expecting in the meeting are there, you can lock the meeting. So again, in your Zoom window, the far right on more, the drop down arrow, you can lock the meeting. So now nobody new can enter. Even if they have the Zoom meeting link, they can't enter the meeting. Um, and that's uh, one way to prevent anyone new from entering once you have all the people there that you want there. Now, uh, let's just go into uh, meetings and schedule a new meeting, pretend like we're, we're creating a new meeting here. If you have those settings in place, this will automatically be clicked, generate a new meeting ID automatically, requiring a password will already be clicked. Um, now down here, enable waiting room. So. Again, you can make sure this is default in the settings that we were just in. But waiting room is another great way to keep unauth unauthorized people from joining the meeting because it means that anyone that joins the meeting, uh, they go into a waiting room first and then it gives you a little pop-up window notification that uh, a certain person um, is in the waiting room and then you have to approve them being able to enter the Zoom room. And so if it's somebody you, you don't recognize, then you don't have to approve it and, they, and, then, and then they can never get in. So even if they have the, the meeting ID, even if they have the password, they still can't get in until you approve their entry. It's like you have a door closed for the meeting and you have to literally go out of there and approve somebody coming in uh, to, to, to the meeting or not. So enable waiting, so it's go ahead and enable waiting room and that's gonna give you more, a higher level of control as well. And, uh, and of course, don't have enabled join before host either. Um, and so as you can see here, there are multiple levels of security that add multiple gates to people being able to enter into a Zoom meeting and Zoom bomb and for unauthorized people to come in and either ruin your meeting or, or cause a, a security or safety issue um, or if they just that, you know, some people might be able to hack into a Zoom meeting and listen in. And because they had the meeting ID and you didn't have a password turned on or you didn't have the enable waiting room turned on or you didn't uh, have any of these other settings that I discussed, you were allowing screen sharing for everyone. Um, that's all these different things is what allows somebody to, to interrupt a meeting. 
Now, if for your own convenience, if you have a recurring meeting with the same group of people in your business, for example, you can click recurring meeting here so that the meeting ID actually stays the same. Um, and uh, you don't have to keep sharing a new link because Zoom automatically will send them a new reminder of the next meeting. And that's just some one way that you don't have to go in here and schedule a brand new meeting every time you have a recurring meeting. And that's one way around that. Uh, but overall, these are the different settings that you need to have in place uh, to prevent the, these so-called hacks, because really these hacks aren't actual hacks of a computer nerd figuring out how to get around Zoom's encryption and security and joining Zoom meetings. It's because people who are hosting these Zoom meetings, they're not going in here and changing these settings because a lot of these settings are not on by default. And so as you can see, there's just multiple ways you can prevent somebody from getting in your meeting that's unauthorized. And so I know that if you follow these recommendations, you're, you're not going to be hacked and you're going to be protected and you're going to be able to have a safe and secure Zoom meeting. And so definitely if you have any questions about anything I shared, let me know in the comment section and get in contact with me and I can give you any further information you need. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel where I share advice all related to video marketing and using online video to grow your business and just online video in general and how to optimize it for, for your business needs. I'm Chad Grevelese and I will see you next time.